We've looked at physical storage devices, now we're going to talk about cloud storage, which is not physical, at least from the user's perspective. So cloud storage is where we have data stored on multiple computers, usually, so usually it's multiple computers, but crucially in a separate location. So not stored on our actual phone, on our actual computer. So these computers called servers, if we're going to use the correct word, so server being a really powerful computer, are stored in data centers. So cloud storage, our data, if we use it, is actually stored in a big computer somewhere, usually in sort of a massive warehouse, in some other place. So not stored on our actual computer. Here is a map of where Amazon have data centers, apparently. Um, they try and keep it quite secret. So data centers scattered about. So if you use Amazon's cloud storage, when you save a file, it's not actually saved on your computer. It'll be saved in a computer like one of these, but in a different location, maybe in South America, maybe in Australia, in some other location, which is why we say cloud storage is not a physical device. But these computers, these servers, do need to store the data somehow, and usually they use magnetic devices, so hard disks usually. I mean, really, if you look here, we've just got stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of hard disks. One computer might have one, one rack of a server might have 25 or even more, so loads. And But nowadays, because solid state is faster and is becoming cheaper, often they will also use SSDs, maybe even replacing hard disks eventually with just SSDs. To get our data or to save data on cloud storage, we usually use a web-based interface. So using the internet, right, because we can't get from uh, the UK to China without sending it via the internet. So we've got to use the internet to do this and usually a website is involved. So this is a website for OneDrive, which is a big cloud storage owned by Microsoft. We can upload files, we can view our files, and this is done all online. Again, our data, if I upload some photos to OneDrive, the data isn't stored on my actual computer it's saved on one of Microsoft's servers somewhere else. And a slightly side point here, Microsoft are a massive company, they own OneDrive, and generally speaking, to make it work as a business, you need to have a massive data center, which costs a lot of money to run, you need a ton of air conditioning, you need lots of expensive computers, servers to actually store the data. So usually there are big companies who are running cloud storage providers. So Dropbox is one big one, Google Drive, owned by Google, a massive company, own YouTube, and like I say, OneDrive, owned by Microsoft, again, a massive company. Usually, there aren't small companies running cloud storage because you need to put a lot of money invested to even have it set up. And I only mention this because it is relevant to our evaluation because if we have a very large companies running the data centers, running for cloud storage, it does mean that the services tend to be quite reliable and quite stable. Now the issue is, as we'll talk about in a second with disadvantages, if the, the server goes down or breaks, your data may get lost. But thankfully, big companies tend to have, tend is the keyword, expert staff, they have lots of money, they know how to run big services like this. In terms of just the general properties of cloud storage, the nature is that you can access your files from anywhere. If you save a photo on your physical device, on your phone, you can't then access it from your computer unless it's stored in cloud storage where we can access it from anywhere. And often we have a web interface, but also we can have apps on phones and other ways to access our data. Cloud storage will often also include backups, so we have copies of our data in case some data gets lost, that's really useful. Maybe also version control, so if you make a change to a Word document, maybe the old version is also saved in case you want to go back, that's also quite useful. However, the major downside is that you need to have an internet connection to access your files. If your internet goes down and your data is all stored online via cloud storage, you can't access your files until you get the internet back. Whereas if you save your data on your physical device, you don't need the internet to access it. You also have to pay for it, of course, but this payment is often not just a one-off. So say you might buy a hard disk for 200 pounds, that's a one-off payment. But cloud storage is often a monthly subscription or yearly subscription. This might be quite a high cost, especially if you are just one user or a small business paying for cloud storage. So the cost may be a little bit higher. Also, because it's run by someone else, you have no control over factors like security or also even where the servers are located. Perhaps you'd rather they be all stored in London, but 
In reality, it may be stored in America, in China, in Australia, in other places you can't control. Likewise, you are reliant on their security being good, otherwise your data might get leaked. Now, of course, because they're big companies, they should have fairly good security, but that is, of course, not guaranteed. And related to my second point about the location of the servers is not just being quite um, protective or patriotic. Some countries have different privacy laws to, say, the UK. Some other countries might have more relaxed privacy laws, which means that your data may be not as protected as it would be in a country like the UK.